Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Torchlight 2. It's a Friday evening. I have a few beers open in front of me and decided to get a, this game going for a new series on YouTube. I'm joined uh, today with my housemate, Mr. DJ357. Say hello, Dara. Hello, people. How's it going? Uh, both our perspectives are going to be joined together in one video, uh, like you would see on the Yogscast channel. So you will see that video on both our channels, and the link to Dara's uh, channel will be in the description of this video. So make sure you check it out and do subscribe. And if you want to see more of this video, please like and favorite and let us know what you think. So Dara, let's start this, shall we? Okie doke, so um, we've played a little bit of this game before on our own, so we're going to go back and start a brand new game. with. Uh, we're playing different characters this time, are we? Yeah, we're going to play with different characters, brand new, straight from scratch. Uh, are we going to choose different classes than before? Um, well, I'm going to pick a different ca uh, class than I had in my other one, because like my own uh, single player, well, other playthrough that we have that I just play on my Outlander, so I'm maybe going to try an engineer this time. So yeah, maybe like any, any of these kind of games that I play, I never really play a magic user, so just for... Shit the giggles, I'm going to try a magic user now, so I'm going to go with the Ember Mage class. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, the Engineer, because I don't really go for like the kind of soldiery turn type, I kind of go for like a rogue class, so this will be new for me as well. Yeah, I had tried the Engineer myself and the other one, and I found it quite enjoyable, but you need to decide kind of early on whether you want to go with, um, say, two-handed weapons, or you want to, say, dual wield or stuff like that, because yeah. I found myself, I kept going back to and fro between, between the two types, and... Uh, it was just hard to get a really good build for my character. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go with this character the way he looks. He's got a monocle in here. He reminds me of a YouTube user that we all know. He's quite famous. I cannot think of the name right now. But anyway, I'm going to think of a name. I'm going to call my name. What am I going to call him? I know you won't be happy about this, but... Uh, Silver Serpent, my character's going to be named after you. It's the only English name I could think of. My character, I'm going to call George. <laughs> I went for something a little less mundane. My character's called Osrath Duquesne. Oh, excuse picking me. <laughs> well, he's an Ember Mage, you know, so he has to have some sort of fancy name to go with his fancy, you know, skill levels and ability and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm going to uh, keep the classic British by having uh, the British British Bulldog, and I guess I could call him, simple plan, Max. Big shout out to Nico. Oh, you can choose what kind of pet you want. I never saw that the last time. Oh, you can, yeah. You can actually change his appearance as well. Wow, I did not see that the last time. That is cool. Okay, I'm totally going with a... A badger. Has to be a badger. badger. <laughs> Everybody knows that badgers are fierce, fierce animals. Yeah, badgers are awesome. So, are we sticking with the veteran like our own play series, or are we going up to Elite, or...? Um, sure, we might as well give the, the people a bit of a thrill. We'll stick up to Elite. Okay, sure, we'll go with Elite, then. And my badger is going to be called Sputnik. <laughs> Sputnik. Awesome. So, is this going to be an internet game or a LAN game? Uh, we'll make it an internet game. And I'm going to call it... True. So those of you who haven't played uh, Torchlight 2, um, to play on the internet, what you need to do is you just need to sign up with a Runic account. So as you can see, I'm logging into my Runic account at the moment to play an online game. If you're playing over the LAN, you don't need to do the same thing. So you're creating a game, are you? Or? Yes, I'm creating a game, yep. Okie doke. So if I filter based on friends only and refresh, once, uh, once Viper has it up and going, I should be able to see. Okay, I'm basically going to put a friends on you, so sorry guys, I, I will not be able to add you to this world and you cannot join our world, sorry to tell you. So you can see over here I have uh, Viper in my friends list, so if you're playing this game with a couple of friends, you'll need to add them in the uh, in the actual game first of all, and then you'll be able to join up their games by, uh, by finding them in the list, so join the game. Lovely stuff, so I think we'll see some fancy little cinematics here in a moment. gathered. Three heroes confronted the beast called Ordrock. Yet even in death, Ordrock's corrupted heart endured and called out.
I quite like the art style for these cinematics. Yeah, it's kind of com comic booky, and I kind of like it. So I can't remember. Did, did, did they have anything similar in the first Torchlight? Um, yeah, in the first Torchlight, it was pretty much the same. It's just like the I don't know the cinematics seem to have improved. Like it's a lot more clear for me. But like it's pretty much the same deal. Like compared to the first Torchlight, it definitely gives Diablo a run for its money. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So yeah, if anyone hasn't got this game, I highly recommend that you check it out on Steam. It was currently, it was an offer for like, was it 15 euro at one stage? Um, I think it was like 17.49, something like that, yeah. So there you go guys, 17.49. A cheap game, for a, a cheap price for a great game. It definitely, hours upon hours, it's definitely, you get your money's worth from it. It's definitely, like, if people are fans of Diablo or even Guild Wars 2, definitely check this out. You probably have seen it on the Oxcast channel anyway that they actually have started playing this and in the beta version for a couple of episodes so like even they checked it out but you know they didn't stick with it but we'll provide the entertainment for you so <laughs> don't worry you'll get the full game play through from us here and our channels. Also, I have released a video um, of uh, Saints, Row, the, Saints Row, the third co-op playthrough with Sam, that was released uh, there on, uh, what day is it today, Friday, it was released on Friday morning, so go check that out and there will be a new episode Sunday Heroes morning, or Sunday afternoon, so make sure to check that out. May fade, but new heroes will arise. And don't worry, I will turn on my subtitles now once I can. Torchlight 2. Da, 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 da. And hello, and here we are. So I'm just going to turn on my subtitles. Yeah, I might as well turn mine on as well. I guess you can all probably tell by this stage that I actually do not play with subtitles ever. Where the hell? I think it's called uh, floating damage on text. I think it is for boss. Like if you turn that on, it shows all text. Okay. I, could be, I could be wrong. As far as I know, there are actually no subtitles because there's very little spoken dialogue. I think this in is this as game. far as I can go. You should carry on to the Asterian Enclave. And it all comes up as kind of text anyway. More than yeah, that's true. You have received a quest. State your okay. So, do we want to show off some of the skill trees and stuff? Um. Yeah, sure. Okay, we might as well. All right. You go first, sir. Okay. Uh. Well, my character is basically strength or sec. Dexterity, focus, and vitality is like every other game. Uh, strength, as you know, as you can see, it's weapon damage and increases it and, and uh, increases the chance that you can get on critical strikes. And dexterity is pretty much the same thing, as you can see in your screen, you can read it yourself. Focus is just magic damage, and vitality is just armor. So the skill trees are as follows. Uh, for my skills, I got something called Flame Hammer, and you can pretty much see that when it comes to skill trees. It's quite broad and you know, you can actually get a lot of uh, customization for your own character if you prefer to have him a certain builds or whatever you fancy in your own gameplay. So it's like many opportunities and you know, a lot of ideas that you can put out and you can you know, go off and do it yourself and play your own way. You don't have to follow a specific way or be dull and boring that like, oh, it has to stay one way. Just put, keep leveling up and keep leveling up the same thing. You can actually do your own thing. So the opportunities and the customizations on different viewpoints is quite endless. One thing, says so. one thing I really really like about the skill trees and I, I honestly can't remember if Diablo did something similar is the whole tiered system so if you're looking at any of those skills that you have in the various different uh, the various different trees like for me because I'm an ember mage I have say infernal skills which is they're all based around kind of fire and stuff like that frost skills and that kind of stuff and you can see the different tiers so if you look at the icy blast um, if I so you put five skill points into it, I unlock the tier one bonus, and it just gives extra features to all those different skills. So I really, really like that system, because it, it kind of, it gives you the opportunity to go, oh, I really, really want that tier one bonus, so I'm gonna put all my energy into trying, trying to put all my skill points into that skill. So it kinda, kinda gives you a drive for, for putting all your skill points towards a specific goal. But then, I, as Tony said, you know, you can just put it wherever you want if you're, you know, following all the different kind of skills and abilities that are there. Yeah. 
So, anyway. Anyway, let's get a move on there. So pretty much everyone's getting up to speed. Um, the controls wise is pretty much the same. Uh, point and click in the direction is pretty much every other hack and slash that PC gamers would have played. Basically, you point in the direction you want to go and he goes in that direction. And it's pretty much, you know, hack and slash. Click on the target you want to attack and it attacks. That's pretty much it. Look, as you're going to see now. Took a massive drop there. And as you can see, that what I did there with the fire is basically just right click, it just um, opens up their special abilities. One really cool thing about this game as well is uh, one or two other games I've seen have implemented something similar. When you're playing in co op or multiplayer or anything like that, uh, all the loot that you see on your screen is individual to you. So I see a staff there and some light gloves. I don't know what, what Tony picked up or what he sees there, but he sees something completely different. So he can feel free to pick everything up that he sees and not worry about stealing other people's loot, which I think is a really, really cool system. Yeah, it's pretty much a handy system. You don't get see, um, I'm not going to cut down Diablo because I enjoy Diablo 2 quite, quite a lot. Diablo 3, not so much. But, um,. In Diablo, like especially playing with friends, and that I've not I experienced the first time that basically you know they would pick up the loot and you'd be like, like oh thanks for stealing everything on me. So you know it's kind of like it's, it's pretty much it gets everyone shared loot that there's no basically oh I gonna go and camp in the corner where you kill a huge but gigantic number of mobs and I just rob all the loot later. So it's kind of like. I kind of like that kind of system as uh, DJ said that basically you can actually go off and you know everyone gets a share of, gets their own look at the loot and actually can pick it up so it's pretty cool. It gives you a, an additional opportunity to kind of trade stuff back and forth between people because it's all going to be random for each individual person so it's not one big lump of loot it's kind of two randomized lumps of loot so if uh, one person picks up something really good for the other person you know you have a good opportunity to trade that stuff there. Did you um did you speak to the destroyer already and pick up that quest? Uh no, I'm currently here just fighting like random mobs that I see around the place. Okay, so where in the main spawn area where you start off at the very beginning of the game, you can speak to the destroyer who is one of the main characters from the first game, the and he gives you the um, he gives you the quest. And if he passes so through here, we'll be waiting for him. He's basically saying Someone that to we need to go off and warn the Asterians that the alchemist is going to be on his way after uh, destroying. I don't know, whatever he destroyed in that cutscene. So, we can see there's, there's a couple of Assyrians chilling out after being wounded there around this area. So, we need to fight our way through small little mobs of ratlins and make our way to the Assyrian enclave and warn them of the impending destruction. And I just died. That's fantastic. You have I'm on me way! Dun, 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 dun. That's my own stupid fault. I'm, by the way, I just leveled up there, uh, DJ, while, while you were uh, displaying to the viewers of what was going on. Um, I got level 2, so basically you can see there now on like, both the left hand side and the right hand side of my screen, there's something flashing. Basically means eye points and skills to assign, as every other game you would understand. So, you know, basically, I've, every level up you get 5 stat points. So if you want to like set, set them to whatever skill you wish. I'm just going to go with a pre-balanced character for now and see how I get on, but um, I'm going to heavy lifting. What's this about? So this skill, skill that I'm using here, Magma Spear, that is really cool. Okay, I like that idea. So this Magma Spear has a mana cost of zero. I quite like that. That's pretty handy. I just unlocked the skill that I can basically attack faster with my great hammer or great sword, so it makes me swing quicker. Which is quite handy, especially with my mobs like around this much, because you need to swing quickly. Okay, that's strange. My mana cost has now jumped up to nine per second. Okay, that's really weird. It was at zero. I don't know why that changed. I'm just gonna run over here and have a quick look. Whoa! Oh, big boy! Here he comes. Some unidentified stuff. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, we just leveled up there. Oh, 
Awesome. Okay, so level up time. So with this guy, this is all about magic damage. So, yeah, focus all the way. And then I would say slight, fo slight, um, focus on vitality as well to try and make sure I don't actually succumb to the waves and hordes of enemies. Yeah. I definitely think, I would definitely agree with you on that one. Like if I was doing an Ember Mage, especially a magic card, I would focus on more on the magic and regeneration of it. But also focus kind of on your head as well, I would recommend. You know? Yeah, that's the thing. Like I've as I say, I've, I've never really played magic characters and it's primarily because they're always known to be fairly weak. Yeah. Defense and stuff, so you always need to be kind of hanging back and I've never really liked having to do that. Yeah, I, I know you're really, jump I know you're right really. into the fray with you know, a dual wielding character and just hack away at all the enemies. That's my normal. Build, so. Yeah, a little bit out of the norm, but ah, sure. I pretty know you quite well, DJ. You like to just go get stuck right in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What? This is YouTube. Everyone got a giggle. It's okay. It's cool. Okay, there's actually someone like dead up here. That's kind of weird. And I didn't do it, so I kind of feel like, what the hell? Anyway, that was me. Oh, cool. Not just a pretty face, <laughs> or a large staff, if you will. <laughs> now, now, and you give out to me. <laughs> ah, one rule for me, another rule for you. Of course, that's always been that way. Okay, war beasts. Not to die. Aren't you a bit big for Tron archers? Tron arrows? Like this. I think he was throwing spears, to be honest. Yeah, my bad. Throwing archers would probably be worse as well, though. Yeah, I know, I, I mean, he's supposed to be throwing arrows, but like, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm this, just is, well, this is the thing I really love about Torchlight 2. Is once you get into the fray, there is just action all over the place. Explosions left, right and centre. And hordes and hordes of enemies rushing at you. And it's just... It's really exhilarating. That's what I really love about this game. Yeah, this game is quite fun. Like, he's just, you know... Not, it's it can be quite easy to like level up, but it can also be quite hard because you know as you see as you said yourself, like there's a big horde of enemies like this, and I'm to kick in a monster shrine, and look what's after going to happen. Oh dear, what have you done? Yeah, you know me, I like a challenge. We might get some goodies. You never know. That's another thing that's great about this game as well, there's just so much loot. There's so much loot, there's so much, it's like, it's quite easy to get money in this. And to earn gold, and uh, what I really like this uh, compared to uh, Torchlight 1, is that you can actually send your pet to town to deliver, like, your items you don't want, your unused items or whatever you don't want to use, and he brings back the gold, or you can actually create a shopping list, so if you're like, too busy in the middle of a quest and you know you've got brains best and you're like oh I want uh, I want to get some health potions so you can actually send your dog out to get the health potions which I think is pretty awesome and a big thumbs up to the developers for actually coming up with that yeah I thought that was a fantastic idea as well as soon as I saw that in our earlier playthrough I was just thinking 20 healing potions please and it was awesome I'm gonna get a. a t I'm gonna equip the tank oh. for my dog here because my dog needs to get some. <coughs> so, also, um, just a little tip for you guys: if you're ever gonna play this game, just shift click and it automatically either goes to the pet's inventory or actually equips him. So, just a little tip for you there. So, what I found over here is I found a locked golden chest. So, what you can see over here in the quest area is that I've actually picked up a golden key. So, there was um, an enemy who had a purple health bar earlier on. He was called. It was Beast Reaper or something like that. He was uh, he was a champion, uh, which is kind of one of those sort of mini boss characters you come across every now and again. And uh, he happened to have a golden key, so I was able to I'm able to unlock this chest now. So if Tony wants to make his way over here to me, he'll get a, an equally awesome bunch of loot from that chest. So what I've just discovered is I've discovered a sockable item. So it's something that you can drop into. A weapon or a piece of armor so that's the venom spec over here so that gives it if it's a weapon it gives it some poison damage if it's armor or a trinket like a ring it gives it um, bonuses to poison armor so and I'm yeah I was just gonna give to a uh, quick chat here about it um, 
as you can see here, uh, with certain, as like uh, DJ just pointed out there, like uh, the come with sockets, like some stuff will come with sockets, weapons and uh, armor and accessories and stuff. We'll have the sockets, so like for example, I have an em ice ember spec here, and as you can see in your screens, like um, armor trinkets, you know, if you equip it to armor or, you know, accessories here, basically you get 8 ice armor and weapon you get 7 ice damage so it depends on how you want to use it so if you want to keep like defend yourself against ice you put it to armor obviously and if you want to create damage then you put it to your weapon but also what I've discovered as well that you can pick up loot such as like this I just equipped it there you saw it in your screens that basically uh, some uh, clothing or weapons will come preloaded so to speak with actual stats and bonus stats on it so as you can see there are plus 1 to my strength attribute bonus and 9 to health so when I equip these pants, basically my strength will get a plus one bonus to my my stat. Plus I have nine plus nine added to my health, so I'm now three fifty instead of like three four one. So what I've managed to do there is there's a very cool ability which I've come across in my skill tree, and uh, some of these uh, some of these skills are passive, some of them are active. So one of my really cool passive ones is a thing called prismatic rift. So uh, basically. There's a 15% chance at the moment in the current rank that when an enemy hits me, he'll be warped away from me and he'll get uh, get it affected with some sort of elemental effect. So that's going to be pretty handy if there's a horde of enemies striking at me. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Right? Oh yeah, just to switch between your weapons, it's like W. It's pretty much same standard keys as every other game that's been out there. Farmer shotgun. Not quite the character for it now. Hey, you were loving the shotguns when you had your um Outlander, yeah. My Outlander's kinda of beast. No no, don't want to go there. Glad you made it. If you guys want to see um our characters from our own uh kind of other other gameplay, uh just add a comment below and we'll gladly show you like what we have. What our characters like and what damage and stuff we can do, because like on our own we just like couldn't wait to play this game so we just jumped right in and we're actually quite far enough in the game at the minute but I know we have a lot more hours to put in but we got made a quite a huge progress in it already 33 shotgun no not really my character now okay so now we're in the Asterian Enclave so this is pretty much the first town we're gonna come across so uh, when we're off dungeoneering and wandering through all the various different areas that we want to Warp back to town, this is where we'll appear. So at the moment the place is pretty bare, we only have a blacksmith who sells armors and weapons and stuff like that, and then we have a general goods vendor. So that'll be health potions and mana potions and stuff like that. One thing that's really cool is if you're playing multiple characters uh, in the town, where you're, wherever you are, there's multiple towns spread throughout the game. Wherever you are, there's what's called a shared stash. Initially, I thought this was actually to share between, say, co-op players, but it's actually to share between all of your other characters. So if you're playing through uh, the, the whole way through to the end of the story with a, a really high-level character and you have some awesome stuff and you want to try a different character, you can take some of that stuff from your high level character, put it in the shared stash and your other characters you're going up along you can start using all the other stuff so that's really really cool that's pretty cool alright oh, there's the blacksmith selling like cool enough weapons to start off with and they're all of course very expensive I'm not even sure what kind of stuff I should be going for as an ember mage I'm going to assume it's staves, staves and wands yeah and maybe what Ah, uh, no, spears probably not. Well, let's have a look at my abilities, see what they focus on. Oh, so yeah, I'm gonna just like, um, 
for when you look at this you're probably wondering like what the red x's are basically the red x's basically means like it gives you like an in, a note with, well, an indication that basically you cannot use it don't use that weapon because you know you don't meet the requirements to use that weapon which is a bit of a pain i would i w like won't lie that it can be a bit of a pain but you know like it just gives you more of that kind of goal like okay i really want to use this weapon so like i will actually drive to use it so it's pretty handy in that but you know so, so at the same time it's kind of like oh uh, Kind of annoying, but oh well. So I kind of really want to use the sword because, like, it does 53, and that's like a lot better than what I'm doing. So I'll put that there, sell that, put that there. Because I'm not gonna worry, because like I know I'll pick up more stuff as we go along the way, so we should be alright. Hmm. It's hard to say, to be honest, which one I should go for, because there are some passive skills, well there's a passive skill for the staff, and then there's another passive skill for the wand. Now the wand one doesn't unlock initially until level 7, so initially I'm, I'm probably best set off to work with the staff, Yeah. but the ability that's there, it creates kind of, uh, it's called bizarre effects, uh, so basically when you're using wands on enemies, um, it can cause additional bizarre effects, so it might be worth looking into. So, but obviously, for the moment, until I reach level seven, I'm stuck with the staffs. So. Yeah, um, I'm just looking at our time today. Do you want to call that an episode? Because we're currently in uh, 27 minutes. Okay, that works. Okay. For me. That works for me. So uh, I guess we'll call it there, guys. Uh, if you really want to see, if you want to see more of this uh, playthrough of this series, uh, like, favorite, and comment, and. Don't forget to take, check out our both our channels. Myself, the links to both our channels will be in the script. Well, the link to the Mr. D DJ Three Five Seven channel will be in uh, the description of my channel, and I'm sure it'll be vice versa. So anyway, guys, anyway, this has been Tarshai Two Co-op Series with DJ Three Five Seven. Uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. See you. Take care. Bye.